We've got a great little piece here by Seiko. I'm really enamored with the Seiko TV series. And this is another Seiko TFT Pocket Color Television model number LVD202. And you can see that it has a built-in clock that is removable. And uh, I put a battery in the clock and got it to work. And so that's reading the correct time. And it's just a separate clock and alarm that operates independently of the television. So this is a color television, UHF, VHF. And there's no radio function. It's just uh, TV. Some of these uh, on earlier model and perhaps some of the previous or the following models had AM FM built to them in as well. This does not have a backlit LCD screen. It operates off of four AA batteries and utilizes the reflection of, of this panel behind here to illuminate the LCD. So in a well-lit room, it, it, uh, the screen lights up just really nicely. But in a dark room, uh, as I can illustrate from putting my hand there, you don't have any, any uh, screen uh, at all. So uh, that's just reflect a reflective surface of the LC, L, uh, LED lights that are here in the shack on the bench. It also came with a four AA battery LCD LED backlight unit and it clips in to the back of the screen just like this and uh, just connects right to the screen trying to do this one-handed sorry and it just snapped right in there and so then when you turn the screen on see how it lights up the the LCD I put batteries in this unit and turned it on and just to see if I had any kind of signal let's see do I have uh, my TV stations running here kid you can, you can have your candle opera back oh thanks <laughs> Okay, yes, I've got, um, I'm not sure what that looks like, that girl, yeah, that's that girl playing on, uh, on TV, so I, uh, I've got that running on the TV station in here, and let's see if we can get it, came in here. Yourself, you know, I've taken up crime. Uh, now, when my mother looks out her window and sees that you're not on that, on that she'll really down. be mad. Got good, strong audio, and I'm going to tune this, but I want you to notice something about this video. Try to tune it. That's about as good as I can get. And here's a brightness control here. I'm uh, adjusting the brightness control. But notice the color of their outfits there. And let's look at it on this other television. Of course I do, Howie. Do you think I want to live for the rest of my life with a crazy person? Let's go tell your mother. Oh, wait, wait. Our things. You're forgetting our things. Oh, <laughs> All right, uh, what I want you to notice is the uh, blacks and whites are almost opposite. Now the green is a uh, green dress and the lady is talking now is correct. But if you'll notice, uh, and her hair is correct, Mario Thomas's hair is black. But what you know I'm getting about? is That's any crazy. white background. Let me turn this other set off. Any white back is uh, background is black, and any um, black background is white. So the picture is pretty dim. 
I can't help but smile when I think of the last thing Arlene said to me. What was that? Right, let me adjust. Find out if Cousin Ann is I'm all right adjust, now. Sorry. I'm going to adjust the color and the tint a little bit. See if I can get colors to work here. So I'm going to back the color. It completely kills the picture. Let's see if I get any picture at all. No. With the with turning the color off, it just completely wipes out the, the uh, picture altogether. I'm going to crank it back up. Right. Let me try that again. Now that, okay, so we got the brightness up. Now I'm adjusting the color. Adjusting the color. There. Just about to lose the picture completely. Right. Right. So I'm going to crank it back up. Crank the color back up. And I'll crank it all the way up. And now let's do the tint. Tint is all the way one direction and all the way the other direction. So I can get a stable picture here. Yeah, there we go. So you can see the faces are green and I can get a uh, decent facial color there. I need to put a color bar uh, screen up here instead of trying to do it with television. But notice that we don't have any, uh, see how blown out the faces are? It's completely blown out. Alright, let's look at it on this other set. Notice that his shirt is black on the on this set. See his shirt is black. Completely black. And her blouse is almost dark green instead of uh, or almost gray instead of uh, white. So anyway, I think you can see that the color or the luminance or something is off. So I want to, uh, I really want to get this set working, but there isn't any uh, documentation available for this set anywhere that I can find. It's got an, an antenna pulls out, but I've got such a good signal in here on, excuse me, on UHF that I didn't need a in an antenna. Um, but yeah, so I'd really like to get this set working like it was original. And so what I'm going to need to do is open it up and pull the, uh, see if I've got some schemat or some uh, caps or something that are creating a problem for the uh, the negative um, some of the negative color it looks like color is completely negative and it might be that the luminance uh, signal is missing and uh, that's why when I pull the color completely off there's no picture left and uh, but I really would like some of your feedback from some of you guys that are familiar with the uh, composite video signals on uh, on televisions if you could give me some insight i'm going to go ahead and post this video uh as a part one and then hopefully i'll get some feedback from some of you technicians and uh, before i just break into this thing yes i realize it's probably just a bad cap inside and i could dig around in here and and look at the uh um uh, poke around and, and tinker and see if i could find some uh, bad caps, but I really would like to either find a schematic for this model LVD202 or get somebody that has some experience with uh, these liquid crystal display televisions. You, know, you remember the, the Seiko watch 
that I uh, did a repair on, we just completely did a recap and it was in horrible condition. The receiver on that, the uh, 007 watch was in such terrible condition that it didn't produce a video and the um, caps had leaked and damaged and nearly destroyed the circuit board. So um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, open this up, but I'm anxious to hear what some of you more experienced technicians would suggest. Okay, I have the uh, case open and uh, removed the, just four screws, just four screws that come out of the back and then unplugged the LCD. Um, the rest of the unit, there's the battery compartment, as you can see. And the, uh, the screen is spring-loaded and very, I mean, really fast spring-loaded. Um, so they put in a dampener system right here, geared dampener that allows the uh, screen to just open slowly. So this is a very stiff dampener that allows the, the screen to open smoothly and slowly. There's the speaker and the dial cord and dial that plugs into the tuner right here. There's the tuner. Volume control, brightness, some kind of a crystal right there. So we've got several little caps here that uh, would be a possibility. There's some internal trimmers here that might be brightness and and uh, I don't know whether this is a chip controlled, probably a chip controlled unit that um, locks in the vertical and horizontal sink, but I don't know what these three adjustments do, but we could replace these caps pretty easily, I think. And there's, let me see, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, plus. 19 caps. So um, if we had one bad cap, that means they're all subject to fail. Not necessarily that they will, but I'd like to uh, track down the cap later in the numbering series possibly that would identify uh, that could be leaky or shorted that's causing that video reversal or the loss of luminance not sure which is really the issue and i'm anxious to hear from some feedback from some of the viewers some of the subscribers out of 1500 some odd subscribers out there somebody ought to know where uh, where the trouble exists there's the vhf uhf switch right here so i'll uh, pull this circuit board out and we'll put the uh, cap tester for any of these that are over one microfarad because the cap tester won't check caps under that value. So we'll check the cap, use the cap tester to test the uh, equivalent series resistance, the ESR value of some of these caps to see if some of them are, are high. Okay, we've got the board out of the case, and we're going to take a look at a couple of these caps right here that are uh, relatively close to the uh, trimmers that we use to adjust the color and the tint. As you can see, this area 
is under suspicion right here. There's a couple of caps here that I want to take a look at and uh, we'll uh, look under the board and then uh, look at some of these other caps as well. There's a couple more right here on the end of the board that are easy, easily accessible. And I immediately notice this L08 inductor. Notice that right there? Look at the end of that conductor, uh, inductor. And let's flip it over and look at the, the back side of this area right here. And you can see immediately, there's that inductor wire right there. It's almost completely gone, the lead for that L08 con inductor. And here's that cap right next to it. And it's been bleeding through the board. So we've definitely got a problem right there. Let's put the ESR tester on it and see what we've got on that cap. And yeah, that's what I thought. It's not even moving the meter. It's, it's over uh, 30 ohms equivalent series resistance. So that capacitor is definitely bad. And it, clearly it's been leaking we can see that on the board. Let's see if there's another one here. Maybe I thought I caught a glimpse of some more corrosion. Yep, right there. Yeah, I can see uh, some more corrosion right there. There's two pins that are almost completely eaten away. Let's see what's on the other side of that board. Yeah, there is a capacitor there. It's this one right here. In fact, it's right next to that uh, tent control. And you'll see there's some clear material there. That could be electrolyte or it could be leftover glue or even some residual rosin from the uh, board cleaning. So I want to try to take a look underneath that cap here. We'll get real tight here and look. Sorry, I'm trembling there. I'm up zoomed in so tight. Yeah, I don't see any electrolyte underneath that cap, but I know it's been leaking because we can tell from the other end of the leads have been leaching out. So we'll take a, another look at that one with the cap tester. And yeah, this one's reading about 15 ohms, which is in the bad range. So we clearly have another bad cap right there. Let me move the meter face in here so you see what I'm talking about when I talk about the equivalent series resistance. This is a capacitor wizard and you can see the in the bad range anything over 10 ohms is suspect to be bad. This capacitor tester sends out a, a high frequency uh, signal that tests these circuits and eliminates the need to pull the caps out of the circuit to test them. So it's a pretty effective test. So that one right there clearly needs to be replaced. All right, we'll take another look around the board very carefully and uh, check to see if we have any other uh, obvious leaking capacitors and we'll test those and replace those. We'll move on to the replacement now and get ready to uh, swap out some of these bad caps.